Hey guys, what is up? Zero here, and welcome back to Fruits of the Literature Club, Chapter 5, Yuri Route. So, in the last episode, uh, oh fuck, I clicked, ah, oh, damn it, no, Zero, bad, load game. <laughs> what I, cl you doing? I clicked forward. Alright, uh, in the last episode, oh, uh, Yuri accidentally stabbed, <laughs> stabbed Zero, because, uh, she was, you know, she was going a little crazy from the drugs that she took, so, uh, that they in in injected her with, and, uh, she accidentally stabbed him. She gave him a good old gash in his stomach, so that's a problem. <laughs> and I think now we are, I think now we're, we're doing a flashback to show how Zero got out of his predicament that he was in before, where all the guys jumped on top of him. Because that was the last time we saw of him, so it was kind of weird to then then see him get stabbed by Yuri. Because like, how the fuck did he get there? So, and I think this is a flashback to show uh, how he got into the situation that he was in. So, let us see. <sighs> Whew. Using the back of my hand, I wipe the blood from my bottom lip. I'm out of breath, I'm running out of energy rapidly. Managed to fend off my attackers long enough to get away, but not unscathed. The sharp pain in my left side is most likely an indicator of a broken rib. And a warm, dull pain shoots up my right leg. It's most likely sprained. Damn it! I was hoping to get away a lot sooner, but they just keep getting up. Leaning my back against the wall, I run my hand through my hair while, ex while exhaling deeply. I need to find Yuri and get out of this hellhole. Situations like this aren't too stressful or difficult for me to manage on my own, but since Yuri's involved, I have to work for two, basically. I can't just worry about myself and escape. Which is why I can't give up. I have to keep going. Each inhale I take stings because of the broken rib, so I try my best to keep my breaths gentle. Centering my stance and mentally preparing myself, I start down the dark hallway once more. I hear yelling from several people around the building, no doubt looking for me. Keeping quiet, I skulk through the hallway until I reach a bend. The bend veers off to my left and leads to a small door at the end. And opening the door reveals to me a small and skinny stairwell that leads up into the building. Probably faculty stairs? Either way, they're going to get me out of, this, out of the immediate area of my pursuers. Starting up the stairs, I hear a scream off in the distance, but not in a specific direction to where I can pinpoint it. It sounds like Yuri. Dashing up the stairs to the next floor, a stretch leads me across the back hall of the building. Ignoring my leg, which is screaming at me to stop running, I continue to run down the hall. Reaching one of the upper level's hallways, I turn and notice someone standing in front of me. Hello, Zero. Wow, well, long time no see. Are you liking your stay here? Ah, uh, well, you know, maybe a kink here or there, I'll probably go on my review. But other than that, sure. Enough of your witty talk. You're becoming more of a thorn in my side than I anticipated. You brought me here. What did you expect? I expected you to die quickly. You were wrong. I'm not going to be dying here, but I can't say the same for you. Alas, but you're a little too late for your dear friend. What? She kept fighting against us. We had no choice but to put her down like a dog. She was behaving too belligerently, and she was a danger. I had to use that big word to just to flex on you a little. <laughs> About how she's dead. <laughs> you know who else used, used to use big words? Your dead girlfriend. <laughs> he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small metallic pocket knife. It's the one that Yuri gave, me, gave to me shortly after the festival. It's covered in blood, which makes my stomach drop as soon as I notice it. You see this? This right here? He gives it towards me with a flick of his wrist. Is what killed your precious Yuri. So, you have my pocket knife and managed to cut yourself on it. Big deal. That doesn't proof that Yuri's dead. At this point, I'm testing a popular internal practice on my job. People's eyes tell you when they're lying. They behave a specific way without consciously knowing. And he exhibits some of these behaviors. You're just stalling now. Your tricks won't work on me. I know too much about you. Interesting. You'd seem to know more than the average Joe. Would you be so kind as to explain how? I have my ways. If you find someone that interests you, you do research on them. 
Whether or not the research is extensive is something you determine. At first, when I was paid, I didn't give two shits about who and what you were. But, after a while, I found an interest. And I kept learning more and more about you. I decided to humor him as while he goes on his tangent. So far, I've let him think he has me cornered. But no matter how much information he has on me, very little of it, little of it is actually about who I am and what I do. Not even the most talented private investigator would be able to undercover my or, or organization. Or, or, no, origination. Not organization. There's no Z. <laughs> <laughs> origination. And that is part of the lore, per se, around me. Now, what I'm really curious about is why you're here. I think it was evident. I'm here to get Yuri back. Okay, Captain Obvious. I'm talking about coming to this town. It's major. He scoffs and rubs his temples. I'm here to go to school, nothing more. What about your old school, eh? It wasn't a general education school. You know, I have a question. Why are we sitting here hanging out with this guy? I thought we were trying to go save Yuri. <laughs> At this I mean, point, you can't you... just go past him. I mean, we kind of can, can't we not? <laughs> I mean, can't we just kind of kick his ass? <laughs> I mean, I think I think he's prepared for that. I think he's trying to make him seem like like oh no, you got. I mean, I know like, that, but like I thought we were in a rush. <laughs> I mean, I guess we are. But, like, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll have to wait and see. It wasn't a general education school. Well, that's very obvious because look at you. You've done things that no other boy your age could do. But why would you come here, of all places, to go to school? He raises his voice and chuckles as he finishes the sentence. And to join a literature club with only girls, no less. And? Do you not see the correlation here? Humor me with it. You, a new mysterious boy who has an insane physique and logical intelligence, just pops up. Teenage girls are more inclined to gravitate towards you because they see you as a perfect individual. You're basically taking advantage of those poor girls. Excuse me? I'm taking advantage of the girls? I've done nothing but do my best for them, to try and make them happy, to become their friend. Actually, you've kind of been a real dick in the beginning. I don't... <laughs> Hold up there, sir. <laughs> Your best, I'm not so sure. <laughs> in the beginning, I remember you just being kind of a dick. <laughs> and, and really kind of being forced to kind of hang out to kind of join the club and even then you still showed up to the club and then complained about how you didn't want to be there <laughs> you weren't that nice of a guy all right that's all i'm saying <laughs> you're selling yourself a little too much <laughs> and where did that get you that's right two of their friends are missing one is dead and the other is about to be they're worried sick and none of this would have happened if you hadn't shown up this was all your fault. You did this. Those words hit me directly inside. Normally, I would be extremely upset at hearing someone antagonize me like this. But he's right. None of this would have happened if I never joined the literature club. None of this would have happened if I never came to this town in the quest of something that I'll never have. You brought this up in Sayori Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you brought this up off screen. You were like, you know, none of this would have happened if you never joined the club. <laughs> Normal life. Damn it. My will to fight immediately weakens and I drop to my knees. What is this? Are you giving up already? Damn. I was wanting to badger you a bit more. I lower my head to the ground and stare at the floor. The man walks towards me, unfolding the pocket knife in his hand. I guess the surefire way to break your defense is to attack what you care for. But this time, I wasn't the one to do that. You did all of this yourself. He stops directly in front of me and I feel the tip of the blade tap on my skull. It's a shame all this had to happen. Yuri didn't deserve to suffer for your existence. You raise the blade off my scalp, prompting me to with a window to strike. Balling my left hand into a fist, I throw my arm upward to impact directly into his groin. Fuck! Out of boldly instinct, he bends over, allowing me extra time to wrap my arm around his wrist and secure the blade. Next... I stand up, I'll wrap my other free hand around his neck. Forcing myself to push through the pain in my leg and ribcage, I throw both myself and the man forward. 
My momentum allows me to slam him into the hard, marbled flooring. Standing over him, I wait for a response. She remains motionless and still, confirming his lost consciousness. She may not deserve it, but you do. I'm not going to let her down. I may have caused all of this, and I'll have to face my consequences afterward. But right now, I need to get Yuri to safety. And I swear to God, I'll not let anyone stop me. Yeah, finally, we're done talking to him for a good eight minutes. <laughs> oh my god. At least we had a nice chat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe there was something where he couldn't attack the guy, but I'm not entirely sure about that. <laughs> Considering he's, like, very skilled in fine combat and such, I really feel like we could have honestly stopped that guy from talking a little sooner. <laughs> But I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. It seemed like we're kind of in a rush situation. And we're just like, well, I let him talk for a bit. It's like, really? Then we're just going to let him speak? <laughs> Yuri could be getting yeah. raped right now, <laughs> for all we know. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Development, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm looking around to see if anyone else is here. I clear the room and head towards the stairwell. I step downwards and shooting pain up my leg and into my back. When I reach the midway of the level, I take a second to steady my breathing. Damn, got how much a broken rib stings. Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> During training, I ended up breaking one because I was sparring with someone much larger than I. My instructor decided that was a great idea. But then again, he always told us that if we can't work against a greater opponent, we won't get anywhere in the field. As much as I hated him, he was right. All right, I can keep going now. Start down the steps again, but hear several people talking around the corner. Inching as close as I can to the edge without exposing myself, he eavesdrop on their conversation. I'm not really sure what to think about that. It's not like it matters. They have an offensive lineman that could get through anything. Whatever, just wait until I win the bet. I'm gonna need that 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Is there anything from the boss about the two kids? Nope, I think he's still deciding what to do. Why don't we just kill him? That's what I said, but no! Boss wants them alive for some reason. It pisses me off. For real, it's whatever though. As long as we get paid, I don't care what we do. I guess. Come on, I need a cigarette. Both of the conversing men continued on a stairwell away from me. Interesting. So they aren't trying to kill Yuri and me just yet. But the two men from the forest directly tried to kill me, so there has to be some degree of disorder in this group's leadership. Whoever is behind this has some ulterior motive for keeping us alive. I'll be damned if I'm going to hang around long enough to find out. Once their voices fade enough to render a good distance away from me, so I turn the small corner and head downstairs too. I contemplate my next moves to distract from the pain. I'm going to need to find my handgun. Or any firearm, actually. I'm not reliable enough right now to get into other close quarters brawl. Stepping out on the bottom floor, I turn to my left and head towards the lounge from earlier. I'm really hoping no one's there. Because I have a hunch that that's where my handgun is. Sneaking to the door, I place my ear against it and listen. Nothing. Perfect. I try the knob and luckily it opens. Idiots. I slide to the crack of the door and quietly close it behind me. The couch is, of course, empty, so they've taken care of their buddy. TV is off, some glass of various drinks are scattered about, and a half-eaten cheese pizza still in the box lies on the table. Ew, just cheese? <laughs> these people are these people are criminals. <laughs> Not even pepperoni. <laughs> no, nah, some people just eat cheese. It's weird. <laughs> Crazies. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are for the comments of, I eat cheese! <laughs> Cheese pizza? Does this mean I'm crazy? Cheese pizza is good, but like not as good as pepperoni. It's not that it's bad, it's just that you could have something on it. <laughs> you could have something to make it yeah. better. Yeah. Along one of the walls are a string of cabinets and shelves. Not hesitating for even a second, I start to search through each of them. Magazines, a recipe book, spare plastic forks and spoons, various cords and chargers, a dog collar? Pens and pencils? Ugh. Just as I give up on searching through the various cu cupboards and drawer drawers, I notice a small shelf near the door that's perfectly hidden when you come in. And what I see on top of it genuinely makes me smile. 
Grab hold of my handgun and slide the magazine out. These guys are dumb. I really hope that they aren't some big organization. I really hope they're not. I don't think they are, and I really I hope that it turns out they're not. <laughs> yeah, I doubt they are. I really, I really, I don't know though, because that one guy, I, I don't actually know, hmm, because that one guy was like, like, no, because the one guy was like, we do our research and stuff like that, but then you also leave his handgun out in, the, <laughs> just, it, just out the outside in the fucking lot in the like, lounge. I feel like a smart person. If you were to take a, if you were to confiscate a weapon from someone, you keep it on you at all times. You either keep it on you, you or you put it in a down. safe. <laughs> Yeah. Or you at least empty the magazine and shit, too. Yeah. Well, not even that. Just get rid of the entire handgun. Like, really? Like, like why? Like, I'm really hoping. Like, there's that. There's the guy sitting there eating the pizza. I'm really hoping that this isn't some big criminal organization. Because it really doesn't feel like it. I doubt it. I feel like I'm getting mixed signals here. Because I'm getting one guy who's like, we do our research, and they also... He's probably just lying. But it's not... No, that's not a lie. Because remember, they researched the MC. They got Yuri knowing that she's important to him because they, you know, they know that. They've quote-unquote done their research. Well, I guess maybe there's some people in here who are better than others. <laughs> I'm just still, no, I'm just really confused. Maybe they're not a big organization because they did have to bring him in here because they because that was one thing. Remember in chapter what was it? Well, the one where they we were fighting them in the forest. I think it was chapter three. It was either chapter three or chapter four. They do say that they want him to show up and they start asking him questions, meaning that they don't really have all the information on him. <laughs> So, yeah. maybe they're not that big, but even then, apparently we do know that his information isn't something that's so easy to get either, so it's kind of like a big organization probably couldn't even get it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, I really hope this doesn't turn out these are some big old dudes. I really hope this is just some one guy who runs them who's just fucking stupid. <laughs> it's Kagan again! <laughs> it's Kagan again. I grab hold of my handgun and slide. I really hope it's not Kagan again. <laughs> that <laughs> was the on, one, I, doubt that, it. Uh, I really hope it's not Kagan again. That was the one thing I didn't <laughs> like about Sayori route. I really hope it's not Kagan again. Slide the magazine out. No changes in the, no changes in the munitions, and it's still chambered. But my other magazines aren't with it. It's a little disheartening, but nevertheless, I now have a much better chance against my enemies. Before I go, I'll walk over to a small side room with the kitchenette and turn on the faucet. Using my hands as a cup, I fill them with water and drink it. After I've had a good amount of water to help rehydrate myself, I splash some on my face. The cooling water feels nice. To this opportunity, I let myself breathe freely for a moment. When you're in a constantly stressful situation, you forget that your breathing can be constantly labored. Yeah, of course. Since we're playing a game, this would be a time where we would save, so let's save, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is the save room. The save room. So, moments you can actually breathe really help clear the mind and calm the nerves. Splash water in my face one last time before taking another drink. Drying my hands off my pants, I turn around and hold my handgun tightly in my grip. I walk toward the door, but stop when I hear something down the hall. It sounds like someone's running down the stairs. Oh, is this the part when we get stabbed? Cracking the door open slightly, I peek down the hallway just as a purple blur turns the corner towards the front door. Wait a second. Was that Yuri? Ah! Yuri's grunt prompts me to immediately leave the room and rush down the hall toward the door. When I turn the corner, Yuri's trying to open the main doors. Yuri, what are you doing here? She turns around and has a burning look in her eyes. She brandishes a bloody box cutter in my direction and barely gives any articulation before finally swinging at me. What the hell? I dodged to my left or right, just narrowly avoid evading the blade of the box cutter. Are you crazy? Damn it. Find some way to disarm her. If I get... I can't move backward anymore. Something blocks me. Behind me is the overturned desk from earlier. Damn it. That thing's gonna... Yuri thrust the blade of her weapon into my admin. abdomen. She twists the blade a few times from left to right before finally pulling the blade out. I'm not able to hold myself up anymore. I collapse against the wall and, s and slide down it. I was about to say Siddle. Damn you, Wind Waker, for confusing me. <laughs> Blood starts to expel from my abdomen, and I place one of my hands over the wound to stop the bleeding. Yuri. 
Zero! She merely recoils away from me and looks at the box cutter. You're alive! Why the hell wouldn't I be? I look up into Yuri's shocked face. Why the hell does she look so surprised? She just tried to kill me! They told me that you died. I fight back the urge to cough, but fail. Oh my god, are you okay? I'm right as rain right now. I continue to press against my stomach and apply pressure. I I'm so sorry. Mary reaches up and places her hand in her head and places her head in her hands, avoiding eye contact with me. What even happened? I don't know. I didn't see that it was you. I saw you as someone else. One of the people here who caused all of this. She didn't see me as me? What kind of sense does that make? Who? Oh. I cut myself off when Yuri makes eye contact with me again. Her eyes look strange. Wait a second. Let me see your eyes. What? I said, let me see your eyes. I raise my voice slightly because of the pain, but I do my best not to raise it too much. What has happened to you? She reluctantly leans towards me. Her pupils are dilated hardcore. I, well, to be honest, I have no idea. I mean, I remember them forcibly injecting me with something. Injecting? You mean, like, a syringe? I catch myself about to cough again and hold my breath to keep myself from doing so. Once the tickle in my throat dissipates, the pain and the bleeding start to make it hard to catch my breath. Yeah, and ever since then, I felt weird and feel like I'm hearing and seeing things. That would make some sense. I acted like I was a monster or something. Are you okay? You're having some trouble breathing. Well, I have a pretty nasty gash in my stomach. So I think there's probably a reason why. Again, I'm so sorry. It's... honestly... it's fine. I could tell you weren't fully there. Here he looks around and stops at my stomach just as a bead of blood trails through my fingers. The sight makes her gasp and nearly panic. What do we do? Well... I need to stop the bleeding before I keel over. How can we do that? I'm looking down, I lift up my shirt to expose the wound. It doesn't look too deep, but nevertheless, I'm still bleeding at a concerning rate. And how long this will take to stop bleeding is going to be extremely detrimental to our survival and escape. As soon as Yuri sees the wound, her face turns white. Listen, there's a small lounge just down the hall to our right. I saw a first aid kit in there earlier on the southern side of the room near the bookshelf. Run in there and grab it so we can put something on this. I point in the direction of the lounge and Yuri nods silently. She gets up and starts to run. As soon as she's out of my sight, I heave a huge sigh to try and elevate some of the pain. And oh my god, it hurts like a son of a bitch. I breathe in and out deeply to help stabilize my heart rate. An irregular and overworked heart rate can increase the amount of blood flow throughout your body. And that's the opposite of what you want when you're bleeding. You want to mitigate the amount of blood that leaks out as much as possible, and lowering how fast your blood pumps through your veins is a must. So, until your returns, I'm going to try and focus my breathing. Your returns a few minutes later with the first aid kit in her hands. I'm sorry I took so long. You're fine, Yuri. She hesitantly opens the red and white plastic case and searches through it. Find some gauze, the thickest that's there. Right. Oh, this kit also has a small bottle of rubbing alcohol. What percentage? What do you mean? It's iso it's isopropyl alcohol, right? There should be a percentage listed somewhere. Um, 70%. Perfect. 70% isopropyl alcohol. Have a notice simple rubbing alcohol. It's a very effective disinfectant and antiseptic. However, any higher percentage would not disinfect as well as 70%, believe it or not. I'll remember this for when I take my alcohol test. <laughs> Luckily, what? I'll get an A. <laughs> Your alcohol test. <laughs> no, it's just sometimes the dialogue. It just seems like I'm like, okay, I should be taking notes, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever get if I ever get shot, I need to know that I want to mitigate the amount of blood that leaks out as much as possible, and lowering how fast my blood pumps through my veins is a must. I kind of already figured that, but <laughs> actually, <laughs> when I read that out loud, I was like, wait a minute, I already knew this. <laughs> 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 it's 
It's like, basically, you don't want the blood to come out. <laughs> and you want to slow your breathing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Listen. You just don't want to die, alright? <laughs> basically, that's why they always say breathe in and breathe out to people who, you know, get stabbed. <laughs> But I was like, I guess it's just, you know, maybe that's how just how the MC talks, you know? Maybe he just, like, <laughs> reminds himself <laughs> of these things. <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't have to get his cheat sheet from his pocket. <laughs> 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 also, I guess this is Yuri's moment of healing the MC, which is something I want to bring up. Someone was like, oh, it's okay. They all help the MC. They all heal him. And I'm like, that doesn't make them useful. <laughs> It just makes it that they're, they just so happen to be there. Honestly, they could be replaced by a fucking janitor. He could do this shit. Mm -hmm. My, this isn't technically helping. I do like so far in the Yuri route that Yuri actually did fight for herself. I like that. You know, Yuri felt like an actual character in her route. Unlike Sayori, who feels like the yeah. equivalent of Ashley from Resident Evil 4. You don't get that reference, but Ashley from Resident Evil 4 was a girl who you had to protect because she couldn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she would just be like, Leon, help! Isn't she like seven or something? She's not seven, no, she's a teenager. Oh, I thought she was like a child. No, she's not a child, she's a teenager. She's, I think, around the same age as Leon, if I remember correctly. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. But yeah, she's... Yeah, it's like she was basically Sayori was just actually from RE4. <laughs> oh. And of course, any lower percentage would be as ineffective as the former. Seventy percent is a good balance of water and alcohol to denature the protein, the denature the proteins of bacterial cells, killing them much quicker and more effectively than other types. If you have too much water, it'll take longer to disinfect and won't be as potent. If you have too little water, the alcohol won't be able to destroy microorganisms as effectively due to the high evaporation rate and less contact time with the affected area. See, some of this just feels like well, I'm in science class. <laughs> or I'm in health class. <laughs> yeah. That's a Yuri route for you. <laughs> Gives you more information than you need. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's cool. It's just... Does it have to be here? <laughs> Yuri, I'm going to pour this on my wound. Do you have the gauze ready? Yes. Press the gauze onto it and push to keep pressure on it when I say. Alright? Right. She hands me the bottle of alcohol and I uncap it. Breaking the plastic seal on the bottle with my finger, I mentally prepare myself for what's next. Exposing the full wound, I start pouring the alcohol on it. Jesus Christ! I see only red for a few seconds as the intense stinging shoots through my entire body. Fighting against my body, which desperately pleads to stop the pain, I keep a steady stream of alcohol contact. The blood starts to drip down my sides with the alcohol. For a few more seconds, I stop pouring and practically drop the bottle onto the ground. Mary fidgets and tries to keep her composure. I can tell she isn't too comfortable with how much blood is involved. The pain finally decides to give me a sweet break and dies down. Making eye contact with Yuri, I nod for her to apply the gauze. The sun sting of the gauze pressing against my open moon makes me jump a little, but I managed to gain control over it again immediately. Zero. I'm not putting you through much pain with this, right? I can stop if you want me to. N no, you're fine. This was bound to be the opposite of fun anyway. Grunting thing as I finish the last words of that sentence, I place my hands on the gauze and let Yuri take away hers. How long until the bleeding stops? Hard to tell. It's all circumstantial. Not if I had to guess. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? The cause is going to keep me from bleeding out. And with the amount of alcohol I poured onto it, the immediate risk of infection is not concerning. My body's going to try and clot the wound to prevent further bleeding, and while it does that, I shouldn't move. I see. I grunt again and lean back against the wall. Hand me one of the elastic bandages in the kit. I'm going to dress my abdomen so the gauze can stay in place. I'll do that for you. It's the least I can do right now to help, since... She cuts herself off and gives a disappointed look off to the side. In response, I lift up my shirt more and lean away from the wall. Yuri grabs a rather large roll of bandage and gingerly wraps it around my stomach. Put more tension on the bandage, and it's a little loose. Right. Yuri tightens the bandage to an acceptable degree of comfort and security. 
And afterward, she quickly brings her hands back to her sides and looks away. I bring my shirt down and cover the bandage. Thank you, Yuri. It's no problem. It's good to see you again. You don't know how happy I am to hear that. It's really good to see you too. It's been very stressful, but seeing you makes me feel a lot better. Yuri gently places her hand against her heart. Can't say I don't feel the same. How did you get here? I was ambushed in the forest. I managed to take one of them down, but the other ran. So, I followed him and realized he was purposely, le purposely leading me somewhere. And I played along with his little game. I knew that he was planning another ambush against me, so I let it happen. I knew that if he overwhelmed me, they would capture me and bring me here. And when I saw the same man a little earlier, he basically confirmed what my theories were. Did you tell them anything they wanted to know? Only a little. This isn't the first time someone's tried to force information out of me. There are ways to kind of see it coming, and ways you can manipulate the circumstance. So I wasn't going to try and risk endangering your life any further. What did they want to know? I was afraid she was going to ask that. This isn't really something I can tell her, either, but Yuri deserves to know the reason she wasn't involved in this bullshit. There's a lot I need to tell you. Yuri sits down next to me and leans against the wall, giving me a curious but concerned look. Sighing in preparation, I look at her and start to explain. I tell her everything I told Monica back at the club when this all started. So, you went to a boarding school? In essence, yes. Even before that, I had made a lot of enemies. My father brought many people around and cohorted with them on a multitude of activities. And with that, my father pissed a lot of people off. <laughs> and as ironic as it sounds, sometimes you have to get to someone, go after someone close to them. I see. Why did that one guy keep mention? Why did that one guy keep mentioning that he wanted you to reveal who you truly are? He makes goofy quotes with her fingers, prompting a slight chuckle from me. There's a lot of people don't know about me. There's a lot of people don't know about me. A lot that I don't like about myself and want to change. That's part of the reason I came here. I just wanted to go to normal school and live a normal life. Free from the chaos and turmoil of my norm. And it just seems like, at times, the more I run, the faster everything catches up to me. I just continually make things worse. Even through the actions I take, I can never fully trust that they are the right thing to do. Take this, for example. I am the reason you're involved with this. I used you to get to me, which I don't think I can ever forgive myself for. And I have had to make decisions that I don't really trust would end up well. I take a second to look away from Yuri, giving myself some time to think. You sound a lot like me, Zero. Eh? Yuri looks down on the floor and softens her voice. I always think I make things worse. In fact, I'm pretty sure I do. If I hadn't gotten so close to you, you wouldn't be in this situation. These people wouldn't have extorted you just so you could rescue me. And because of that, you've put yourself in a lot of danger just to come back and save me. Someone like me doesn't deserve that. Yuri looks away from me while rubbing her eyes. You're right. You don't deserve any of this. Yuri, you're a sweet girl who isn't hard to make happy. You're most happy with things like books, which you can immerse yourself and others in. I can easily tell that when you explain a poem or story to me, you're passionate about those fictional worlds and that's where you find your comfort. It's because I can't find comfort anywhere else. In everything I do or say, I hesitate. These hesitations are because, well, I'm scared of making things worse. Like, maybe I'll say something and it just doesn't sound right and make everything awkward or complicated. It always happened with my family. <laughs> That's nothing compared to me. I say some pretty weird shit, Yuri. Yuri chuckles silently. I, I didn't mean to laugh at that, I'm sorry. Don't be. It was meant to cheer you up. Still pressing on my stomach with my left hand, I reach my right around her shoulders and embrace her. Uh. Yuri timidly wraps one of her arms around my shoulders and hugs back. I can see a small twinge of flustered embarrassment in her eyes, paired with a small coy smile. But the moment doesn't last long before I realize where we were. We're still in the main lobby area. We're completely defenseless and left open for any of our captors to take the kill. Yuri, we need to get out of this lobby. We're too exposed. Good idea. 
You know a good place where we can rest for a bit? What about the basement I was kept in? Where is it? Just down the hall, a little here. Reed points to her right at a single door towards the right-hand wall hall. Hmm. No. It's too easy for someone to hide outside the door for us, and if we need to get out quickly and easily, we'll need a secondary exit. Right. He looks down toward the floor and visibly ponders to herself. What about one of the classrooms on this floor? I was in one earlier and it was completely empty. Maybe we can find an unlocked room and rest in there? We should find one that's away from the main lobby here, so it's less traveled. Right, I'll look around. Marie lifts herself up and looks back down at me. Are, are you sure you're going to be okay alone for a few minutes? Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm fine. She smiles hesitantly. It's obvious I'm saying this just to make her feel better. But she accepts it and starts to walk down the hallway to her right, leaving me alone in the lobby. I take the opportunity to exhale deeply and release some of the pain I've been feeling. Yuri's already struggling enough to stay as brave as she had been. I can't really let her see that I'm in constant pain or stress myself. She's been extremely brave so far. It both surprises and amazes me. For a girl like Yuri's extremely shy, timid, and scared of confrontation, she must have the strength to try and escape from dangerous and unsettling odds. That's my type of girl. <laughs> Chuckling to myself, I rub my hand from my stomach and I elevate the pressure on it. Pain lessens, but ultimately doesn't go away. Scooting my back up against the wall more, the pain burns inside and calls me to grunt loudly. Here it comes back a few seconds later, I shining a glimmer of hope. I found an open, empty room we, tr we can try. We try. <laughs> Perfect. Would you mind helping me up? Not at all. Works over and grasps on my right forearm. I position my left leg in a way that'll help me push me up from the ground while my right supports my weight. Ready? Yeah. I push off the ground while Yuri pulls me up. The pain from the sudden movement sends a searing pain throughout my abdomen. My body instinctively bends over, almost toppling me and Yuri. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I got it. I catch myself before I lose my footing and stabilize both of us. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. It's not really your fault. Let's get to the room quickly. Yuri wraps her my right arm around her shoulders and tries to use her weight to keep me supported. I keep my left hand pressed tightly against my stomach, pushing through the pain of my ribcage and leg. Are you okay? I'm a little more than fucked up right now. <laughs> Pretty sure I have a rib or two broken, along with a sprained leg. I'm sorry to hear that. Your stories are worse at the end of that sentence, which stirs up some concern within me. We shuffle through the hallway and reach the door. Your reaches to open the door and we both step in. But Yuri seems out of breath suddenly, I'm looking down at her knees, I can see them visibly shake. Ooh, we're gonna stop it right there! What's wrong with Yuri? Cliffhanger! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but, alright, so yeah. It is, this is the end. So let me talk about some things. I wanted to talk about this, but a moment was happening. But now, I think it's feel, I can feel free to talk about this. Sadly, the history won't show it anymore. But, Yuri talking right there? All of that should have been said by Sayori! <laughs> When I was reading it, I got so much Sayori vibes that, like, her like, she should have, she should have had those pro those problems. Like, she was talking like how, oh, you wouldn't have been hurt because of me and stuff like that. All of that would have been Sayori. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Sayori was executed that well. <laughs> That's so, like all of that would have been like it makes sense for Yuri to some degree because Yuri blames herself in the default game a lot. So, I guess it makes sense for Yuri. But it also would have made even more sense with Sayori, because it would show that her depression is still kicking in, and that it's still a thing. Like, her being like, you know, I'm the reason all this happens, I'm afraid that if I do something, it's gonna mess something up. That's what depression does! <laughs> it makes you second-guess yeah. yourself! Yeah. Not even just second-guess, it makes you think that you're the problem of things. I was like, I really wish that was for Sayori's. It was like, it just feels like, ah. Uh. Also, another thing I wanted to mention. I was going to talk about how I'm like, yeah, Yuri is really weirdly calm. Because he talked about how she's extremely timid. And I'm like, yeah, Yuri being calm throughout all this is kind of weird. But then I was like, you know what? I'll give it the suspension of disbelief. Yuri being calm. Sure, that's more, 
It's better to read that than Yuri freaking out, sitting by MC, being like, I'm scared. <laughs> and then he would have to do everything. So Yuri standing up and doing stuff, you know, for suspension of disbelief, it makes the story more interesting. That's something I said the Sayori route needed more of. It needs, or just fruits in general needs more of. It needs suspension of disbelief. Because sometimes, realism is boring to read. That was the problem with rain clouds. They're like, look, they depicted depression well. That doesn't make it enjoying to read. In case you didn't know, depression isn't really enjoyable to have. <laughs> yeah, and that mod when I played it like oh, ages ago, I ended up skipping like the last quarter of it. Yeah, because like it gets annoying. And yeah, depression's annoying when you have it. So it's like, you depicted it well, congrats. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I feel like you should focus more on enjoyment than realism. <laughs> Like, suspension of disbelief, I'm not saying Yuri's gotta do something completely out of the door, she's gotta fucking fly away, but like, just not having to <laughs> act like how a person would react in that situation just a little bit, like manning them up just a bit and such, I feel like it's fine. But also, another thing I wanted to point it out, I was like, Yuri, Yuri it's, just, it's weird though, because I'm like, I'm fine with Yuri acting like this, because you know, it makes the story flow better. But it's just weird how she's the timid one, and she's acting braver than Sayori! <laughs> Like, that's just so weird to me. It's like she, compared to say, it's like, it's only really a problem when compared to Sayori's route. Because then you're like, why is Yuri calmer than Sayori in this situation? <laughs> but it's not a problem if you just take Yuri's route as a whole. <laughs> like, it's only an issue if you don't compare her to Sayori. <laughs> I mean, it's only an issue if you do compare her to Sayori. But yeah, that's basically it. Um... So far, Yuri route, again, still enjoying it. Like it more than Sayori's route, <laughs> I guess, at this point. Uh, interested to see what happens next in such. So, yeah. Sorry for not uploading for the past few days. Stuff's been happening. Monica's been sick, and I've been working on stuff. With, for just a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Working on stuff for our mod. Working on the custom dialogue thing that might be uploaded eventually. You'll see that at some point. And yeah, I learned how to code now, and I will remember this time. Last time I said I learned how to code and I forgot, but now I actually remember. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. If you guys want to play this for yourself, the link's in the description down below. And if you can play it for yourself, to be a fair, I kind of highly recommend it if you are able to play it. Because I know some people are kind of like, but I don't want to hear Zero's comments and stuff like that about what I'm saying. But I feel like you would appreciate my comments more if you've already played the mod. Because then you can come back to the video and see my thoughts on it. Or, if you can't play mods, then you can just watch this playthrough. Or if my comments don't bother you that much, then you can just watch my playthrough for your first watching of Fruits. Why not? I really don't care what you do with the video. <laughs> you, can, you can download this video and have it in your files to watch every single day if you want to. Which is really weird, but I mean, if this is your favorite video, no. you do you, man. <laughs> but yeah. gonna do that, just because. No one's gonna do that. So. But anyway... Hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> this has been Zero. I'm a chef chef at this masquerade. Hiding this place of mine. A free for you to draw. I'm a chef chef What a strategy. Please don't take off my mask. Revealing dark.